Hamas commanders and fighters have you killed in the war? Thousands. Thousands. Correct. How do you know they're Hamas fighters and not civilians? So, obviously, in any war situation, it's difficult to know exactly. But we are. But how can you state that there are thousands? We know killed. that. That's our estimation. The IDF has some of the world's most advanced precision-guided weapon Thank systems. Thank goodness we do, because we face we formidable have, enemies. We have seen you use these weapons in previous fights, where you can target a single Hamas commander in his car, even in his apartment in a multi-story building. Yet, in this war, you have raised whole neighborhoods in your bombing. Why is that? Hamas has embedded itself deliberately under the civilian population. And we must destroy Hamas. And so we've asked civilians to leave the area, and the overwhelming majority of civilians have heeded our advice and left. And that allows us to take on Hamas. Mr. Regev, you talk as if there's places to hide from the bombs in Gaza. You tell people to go to southern parts of Gaza, and then your Air Force bombs areas in the south, killing people there. Where should people go? So that we have designated, there's an answer to that question. We have shared with uh, the Americans and the United Nations, specific zones, which are safe zones. They're in the south. Most this is totally new to me. When did you share these so, zones? Uh, a week ago, when we started talking about moving to the south. Because up a until week now, ago, so you've been bombing for six weeks. Mainly in the north. You, mainly then the you provide safe so zones. Since you and the Egyptians have denied international press access to the Gaza Strip. In Egypt's case, it figures. It's a dictatorship. There is no freedom of press there. Israel, on the other hand, prides itself as the, as the only democracy in the Middle East. Why won't you allow journalists to enter Gaza? It's a war zone. It's very dangerous. We do a uh, press enter uh, uh, when it's feasible for us. But it's on your terms. It's an embed with IDF. Because it's a combat zone. How can we know that what you are saying is true when you don't allow international observers, where you don't allow check me. international check me. press? Check me. How check can me you check? Humanity. We're not on the ground. We're not on the ground with you. You, you are invited to join one of our press. Uh, where you go. decide where we go, but who we, we don't talk control to, what we film, and you control our footage. Uh, on the contrary. If the BBC did it, if CNN did it, yes? yes. It's, it's not professional, of course it's professional. But is that your definition of how free press should operate? I would say to you. With all those constraints? I would say to you that Israel is known for having a free press. The democratic state of Israel is controlling half of Gaza. Why don't you allow us to go it's in still there? A war in zone. Your areas? It's still a war zone. We can take care of our security. I don't, I don't, I, sorry, we have a responsibility. We don't allow civilians into a war zone. That would be uh, irresponsible. Let's move on. You talked about the displaced people. The war has forced 1.7 million Gazans from their homes. Why won't you allow them back to their homes in northern Gaza? Because it's still a war zone. And we say when the fighting is over, people can return. Of course they can. Palestinians in Gaza claim Israel has a more sinister plan of displacing them. Is this, is this true? Hamas propaganda. Why then did your intelligence ministry draft a wartime proposal right after you invaded Gaza to transfer Gaza's 2.2 million people to Egypt's Sinai Peninsula? So we have a large bureaucracy. And uh, the job of the bureaucracy is to produce papers and to think ideas, to come up with ideas. And uh, Why come up with such an idea? So, so it's, not, it's not government policy, but it's the job of people. Anyway, if you say it's not part of your plan, why? It's not, part, it's why not policy. It's but not why, policy. if it's not your plan to displace people from Gaza to Egypt, why has your boss, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, been lobbying the EU to pressure Egypt into accepting refugees from Gaza according to the Financial Times? So we would urge all countries to accept refugees from Gaza. We think that's the humane thing to do. So you and have been lobbying the EU to accept We've them. been urging all countries to accept Palestinian refugees, and even if just to accept people to go to hostels. To give the people of Gaza a better future? Correct, 100%. Don't you think that the thousands of thousands of Palestinians who have lost loved ones, who have lost everything they have on earth, will have an enormous amount of resentment and hatred towards the Israelis after your war? The opposite is true. Really? Yes. When this is over, I understand that the people of Gaza have historical animosities towards Israelis. I understand that. But they are human beings who can think. And they know who started this war. They know who initiated this war. They know who brought this catastrophe upon them. I was asking you about the overarching solution to this conflict, and that's bigger than Hamas. So Correct. I want to ask you um, up front, should the Palestinians have the right to self-determination to an independent Palestine? So our position of, of the Prime Minister 
Netanyahu is that the Palestinians should have all the powers to govern themselves and none of the powers to threaten Israel. That's a, a, a complicated formula. We pulled out of the Gaza Strip in 2005 and the whole international community uh, applauded us. We took down all the settlements to the very last one. We went back to the 1967 line, which people in Europe say is the legitimate international border. There is no reason whatsoever for conflict between Israel and Gaza. But you failed to mention that you imposed one of the harshest blockades on Earth. Gaza was turned into, according to the UN rights group, into the largest open-air prison. You decide what goes in, what goes out, who moves in, who moves out. You control the air, you control the sea, and then you expect them to live in peace side by side with you. You forget one small fact. We imposed restrictions on movement in and out of Gaza only after Hamas took control and only after they declared war on us and started to use the Gaza Strip as a platform for military operations against Israel. So in your fight against Hamas, it's fine that 2.2 million people suffer. Do you accept the right of a Palestine, independent Palestine, to exist alongside Israel? All the powers for Palestinians to rule themselves. It's a very simple question. Yes, I, I'm answering you. Yeah. All the powers to rule themselves, to govern themselves, none of the powers that could hurt us. It sounds like you are accepting a Palestinian state on your terms. So there is no self-determination for the Palestinians. Isn't the problem, though, as we discussed before, the denial of the Jewish people's right to self-determination? Because if Palestinians say that my country is an illegitimate colonialist creation, which is what even Palestinian moderates will say, they are denying the Jewish people yeah. the right to self-determination. But if you say the Jewish state has no right to exist in any border... No, but not all Palestinians say that, sir. Not all Palestinians claim that, okay? The Palestinian Authority, who has a peace deal with you, who is running the West Bank, there is no Hamas ruling the West Bank. Why are you oppressing Palestinians in the West Bank? Why are your forces rounding up hundreds of young men, arresting them? Why have over 200 Palestinians been killed on the, in the West Bank in the past seven weeks? Why are you expanding the occupation? First of all, there's Hamas across the West Bank. There are Hamas cells across the West Bank who want to commit the sort of atrocities that were committed up to against Israel on October 7th. They want to go into uh, Israeli communities and they want to butcher people. And so we are preempting and we are trying to arrest people and take out terrorists. This is self-defense. So you defend the operations in the West Bank, the of raids. Course. They are designed, they the, are designed. The, the killings, the arrests. When you say, uh, when we arrest Hamas people, of course that's a good thing. You've arrested children as well, sir. 14-year-old boy. Tamir Pardo, a former Mossad chief, recently said Israel is enforcing an apartheid system in the West Bank. He said, and I quote, in a territory where two people are judged under two legal systems, that is an apartheid state. How would you respond to that? So the, the, the factual part is correct. In other words, uh, there is Israeli law for Israeli uh, um, uh, citizens. And Settlers who are living there illegally according to international law. In, we don't obviously accept that, but, but, but there's Israeli law for Israeli citizens and uh, uh, Palestinians living there are under military law. But if you make one legal system, there's a word for that. That's called annexation, which the international community opposes and most Israelis don't want to do. So you prefer military rule over uh, the Palestinians? It, I, as a temporary solution until we can find permanent agreement, I'm, I can't see an alternative. It is illogical to say to Israelis, you're not allowed to annex, but you've got two legal systems. So what is the alternative? There isn't an alternative.